of um, uh, shorthand. Listen, the door was too noisy. <laughs> they still <laughs> sneaking even if it's right. <laughs> Hey, yeah, everyone keeps telling you, oh, we just had so much fun yeah, through there. So yeah. much fun yeah. there. Yeah. Nice matching, guys. You look very coordinated. You match. Oh, well, Hello, Kevin. Questions. How are you? Good. You I'm may be going good. to the other room. You come to the main guys I've come first. To this yeah, is the best you one. Come, come yeah. to the most oh, no, more no. people first. Oh, yeah. I was prepared for this interview. I just thought it was second. <laughs> <laughs> just so you know. Yeah. Um, right, I'll get my questions up. Great. So, what was it when you first got the scripts and made you go, I want to do this one? I'm going to get Oh, it Rick. was so unique and mm. so beautifully written by David McPherson, uh, who was an incredible new, brand new writer. Mm. Um, yeah, and a classic, you know, brilliant, brilliant script. Mm. That's what drew me to it. Yeah, John Strickland, who we'd all worked yes. with before, a uh, director attached to it. And um, yeah, David uh, evokes this very, very different world, which I d knew nothing about. And I think, you know, life on a rig um, and the working practices of a rig and what, what they're getting up to is a big unknown. Mm -hmm. You know, you have these huge structures. Goodness knows how they get them into the middle of the ocean in the first place. Um, very, very isolated and very extreme, um, dangerous environments. And so you've got the perfect setting for a, a drama. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned John Shirley. I mean, he's such a force in British sort of yeah, TV history. I mean, going absolutely. all the way back to like Prime Suspect. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, what's it like to collaborate with someone like that? Because I guess you, when, you, when you're an actor, you want to have sort of trust and confidence in the kind of, in the setting and the, the director on set. Mm. When you've got someone with that much experience and that much pedigree, it must just be so much, that element of trust must be just so inbuilt, I suppose. It really yeah. is. You know, particularly if you've worked with him before, so you know, you know how good he is, even, you know, it's not just by reputation and stuff that you've done, but because you've, you worked mm. with him before, but... I remember the first, you know, the, we were right in a kind of at the deep end in a way that the first stuff we did were in the control room and it probably had the most scary kind of terminology and we, we had to move around and make it look like it was our own. And very early on with, with John, just, um, just the way he handles the camera, the way he pieces it together, you just, yeah, you, you, he so helps you inhabit the space that you're in very, very uh, easily. Mm -hmm. So it is fantastic, you know, and, you know, these things can absolutely undo you. you I, I've been undone by, not, not often, but by, by directors, by not sort of just making the environment comfortable for mm. you, and particularly for us in this world, because we were all doing things that were quite, you know, you know I am not an offshore yeah, installation alien. manager. <laughs> this is all alien territory. All these things, uh, not least these stunning sets that we were working on, help you believe yourself. Yeah, yeah, and he's utterly brilliant. You know, he's he's he's, he's so much fun to work with. And I think if you've worked with him before, you have a real kind of um, uh, shorthand. Listen, the door was too noisy. <laughs> they still yeah. sneaking even if it's right. <laughs> Hey, yeah, everyone keeps telling you, oh, we just had so much fun yeah, through there. So yeah. much fun through there. Yeah. 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 Nice matching, guys. Yeah. You look very coordinated. You match. Have you ever seen Mel Brooks on The One Show? Did you ever see that clip? No, no, oh, no. Oh, no, no. Just, he found it all very funny. Did he? Um, <laughs> uh, YouTube that later. Yeah, you should. Yeah, yeah. Um, you mentioned about the, the, the sort of terminology and getting to grips with these characters. How much research do you have to do? If you're playing an oil rig manager, mm -hmm. a medic, do you? Because I know some actors go very method and they like to understand the, the, the craft, the vocation, the science, whatever to do with mm -hmm. the role. And that can help some actors, I'm sure. And some actors just go with what's on the page. What's your kind of approaches to when you play characters like this? Oh, we got really mm -hmm. lucky. We got really lucky on this, didn't we? We had so many experts. Um, you know, you couldn't not know uh, about the job that you were doing. I had a lovely lady called Pam Smith, who was actually the on-site medic. Mm. So she, she's, she's very, she's, she's an expert mm. as, as she is doing a real life. Um, and so we kind of, she felt that a lot of TV work um, and, and medical stuff on TV wasn't quite there. Mm -hmm. So we kind of made a pact with John and we, we kind of said, you know, as much as we can, we will make it as truthful mm -hmm. as possible to your taste. And uh, she wasn't shy about no, saying either. No, so, uh, yeah, it was it was great. Her expert advice was uh, brilliant for me. I couldn't have done it without her. She was absolutely uh, amazing for me, for sure. Yeah, yeah no, I just, you know, you do... Um, uh, when you're, listen, it would take a decade to train to be an offshore installation manager. That's not why I'm, I'm an actor. So you, how, how, you, how you make it real for yourself. And 
the truth is you sort of the script focuses on the things that you really need to focus on because they're all good scripts will conjure the situation and give you the lines that you would say in that situation if you were that person mm. so it's a bit like um uh i sort of i was thinking this uh before doing it that i did a, a play once uh, where I, I had to play a, a, a flute mm. uh, which i've never played before <laughs> in my life uh so i you don't learn to play the flute and, and learn all the scales and do you, you you need three four phrases that you do elegantly and so that's what you work on you work on the little bit that you need to do and line by line through this script you zone in on those bits that you need to do and and that's what you and hopefully you can get those up and uh, an actor's facility is to be able to get that up to to speed really quickly mm -hmm. and i had the wonderful guiding hand of this guy called derek anderson who was an oim recently retired and he looked at every line that I said and then watched me doing it and, and you know, it helped me every step of the way. And he would, you know, he would give me the thumbs up. Uh, and, uh, you know, if it was all right with him and if it was all right with John, let's move on. Yeah, <laughs> I love that authenticity. I mean, obviously, even just obviously yeah. London Duty, which you know very well, when they're having the conversations in the room and the kind of beeps on the thing, mm. I know obviously yeah. that's... You know, as an audience member, some, a lot of the terminology goes way over my head, but I yeah, love not knowing yeah, sometimes. Yeah, right. I exactly. think so, yeah. I yeah. think it gives it a kind of genuine feel, yeah, doesn't it? So, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, but I mean, this show really sets up, because I knew nothing about this going mm -hmm. into it, so it really sets up the humanity. And I think I was expecting maybe a kind of a gritty tale of people working out on the old rig. And then it goes a bit, you know, supernatural. Mm -hmm. so it's been, did you, was it sold to you as a kind of sci-fi, or did that hit you as well in a quite a surprising way when you read the It the did. I'm really glad you say yeah. that, because I, I felt, I think it's imbued with a real lovely humanity mm. all, all the way throughout and that's kind of you and that's what's going to make it I think um, uh, potent it's going to make it sort of moving as a drama if we're if we're caring for the people uh, on board again it's David McPherson's writing that kind of brings you in and gets you to know people really really swiftly without exposition uh, so you see all the kind of josh you see the dynamic you mm. see who everyone is and what they do and then it, it then it spins and it spins quite relatively quickly you know um, so no, it wasn't. It was it was sold as yeah. I mean, what is it? It's a it's a, a thriller with a, a supernatural element in it. It's mm -hmm. a kind of edge of your seats. Um, what what's going to happen next? Drama. Yeah. Um, but it's full. I hope of of real people who you care about. Um, so it's. Yeah, it feels like it's got all the best elements. Yeah, I think that's what makes it thought provoking, really, because I think if you were just to go hell for leather with the um, with the with the working element of, of, mm. of an actual rig without the human interaction that you see, I don't think that you'd feel the plausibility uh, mm. of of the situation that they're in and and kind of make it relatable to um, the real human world out mm -hmm. out there, you know. So. I think that's that's what's so brilliant about it. Yeah, and obviously there's all the kind of fog, the tremors. What what did you guys have to work with? To, to, to I mean, is that a lot of that? I guess is put into post. But did they give you stuff? Did they give you fog to kind of? Do they did absolutely. Yeah. You know, we had we have every element there, mm -hmm. and you know, sometimes we were we were out and about, and we would be you know. Uh, shooting exteriors and exteriors, but um, not actually on on a rig itself because that would have been sort of completely impossible to mm -hmm. do. To well, even just getting us on or off in the the first place, so there were bits and pieces that were shot, but generally without without actors. So no, listen, they would be chucking everything. Else. They'd be chucking sort of, you know, things of water, um, wind, yeah. fog, everything. The fog <laughs> was very real. Um, well, while we did it, um, and you and I remember there's there's other elements when things oh, start gosh. to appear. Um, which was, I thought, again, beautifully done. And it was all, you know, it was a uh, orchestrated timing mm. so that we would be doing the scene and then suddenly, you know, you'd be midline and suddenly this thing would appear yeah. through the mm. sky. So, yeah, no, it was all done for us. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, obviously, there's a few kind of Game of Thrones actors in there, a few Line of Duty actors in there. It's nice to see familiar faces. It's a bit like I always imagine, you know, when you see like footage of the England camp at the World Cup. Yeah. You have the Man United players sat over there, the Spurs ones, yeah. in the kind of canteen, just I, when you gravitate towards yeah, that. Yeah, I know. I always yeah. think that about the footies as well. I was always <laughs> yeah. really when these yeah. these teams are playing each other, are all hugging each other <laughs> and uh, celebrating the goals together. Yeah, oh, then, oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, they, they're all, opposition. they don't hate each other, yeah. really. Um, <laughs> Yeah, there was, it was very No, lovely, it was lovely. It? You know what, we all kind of like know, knew yeah. each other a little bit anyway, um, particularly through working with John. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of us have worked with John before, um, the director. Um, yeah, so it was it was lovely. It was a safe environment to work mm -hmm. in, which obviously on the grand scale of the um, the, the rig uh, set and everything like that, you needed to feel protected within the within the acting um, mm -hmm. and the directing and things like that. So it was, it was yeah. amazing.
It was amazing. I've got, you've both been on sort of successful TV shows. Mm. I was wondering, when you sign up to a TV show, because I'm sort of obviously, you know, when you would have signed up to Game mm. of Thrones, do you look at things as a potentially 10-year project? Or do you treat it by just this season, let's see how this goes and go from there? Because I guess when you sign up to any TV show, there's the possibility mm. that you're going to be tied to something for a long part of your career. Is that something that goes through your Yeah, minds? listen, being tied to something that is good, that is not a negative. That no, is a, no, you no, know, a good so thing. It's a good thing. So <laughs> you, you, the thing is, you, it's, you're you only going to have a, it's only going to be an issue if it goes incredibly well. Yeah. And I think I can cope with that. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I can cope, cope with things going really, really well. So <laughs> they keep wanting me to carry on doing it. Um, but the truth is, you sort of, uh, certainly something like Thrones, um, no one had any idea that it was going to quite have the trajectory that it did, um, you know, uh, and it evolved, you know, it, it changed through. So, so initially it was pretty ropey. It was, it was, you know, the pilot was, you know, never really saw the light of day for whatever reason. Um, so they learned very quickly and, you know, God, God bless the Americans because they sort of, you know, they will take a chance and they'll go for it. And, you know, again, I sort of want to say, you know, we're very, very lucky as British actors speaking the English language. We get the chance to do these things and, you know, and the Americans will come in or, you know, Prime Video will come in and they will have financed these things mm. and, you know, generate this, these extraordinary works, so, which I have to say probably the likes of our more localised networks are, are not willing to take that much of a risk on. Yeah. I mean, it's an ever-changing environment. So, but... Um, no, so you you don't, you know, part of you, a little bit, you hope so, you want it to do well, you yeah. would like to carry on doing it, but you know, you, you have to be, you know... Pragmatic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a wonderful team, the the creatives on this and the develop mm -hmm. the developing teams that worked with David for five years prior to this script, you know, seeing the light of day. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah. I mean, they've got, they've got the time, these big networks have got the time to, to do that and create these shows that are hopefully, fingers crossed, long lasting. I mean, honestly, as an actor, you, you feel so lucky. Yeah. Because uh, you come into these things at the 11th hour yeah. after a great, great deal of work has yeah. been done. You know, what people have sort of, you know, lost years trying to get something mounted, trying to get the finance, getting getting a production company to want to make it. And then all the pre-preparation, the pre-production mm -hmm. to, to create rigs, to put it all together, to find your costume. So you're so flattered as an actor. You kind of, And then you're put in the kind of the visible uh, starry space where, you know, and, the, and your job is to make it look like it all belongs to you and mm -hmm. you did it all and these are my machines and I know what I'm doing and these are my clothes, but you sort of possess it, but everyone has given you the, the chance to do that and I'm always, I've never, never stopped being grateful for that. Yeah. And obviously it all leads up all that hard work, everything to kind of launch night, you know, or, or release. Mm. Um, do, you, well, do you make plans for kind of launch nights now? Because you're both quite experienced. Or do you still, has it got to a point where you've been in enough stuff that you can walk into a room and you can flick over and go, oh, I'm in that. And kind of just <laughs> see yourself in something. Or do you still kind of, is there still a bit of a, do you make a bit of a, a, a deal of, of you, of the launch of a new show you're in at home with your family? Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. It's always exciting. Yeah, it's, it's always exciting. exciting. Yeah. Particularly, I mean, I'm from a family of like, um, you know, a working class family mm. who I've got no ties to the acting world mm. whatsoever so it's really exciting for them even if yeah. they see me in the paper or something yeah. you know it's incredible and um, yeah it's always exciting yeah, it's always exciting screening parties at home and things definitely. like that definitely I mean uh, there's, there's, there's sort of launch and lots of what we're doing today and what you're a yeah. part of is this uh, we, we had a premiere in Edinburgh last mm. night and then there's a premiere in London tonight which is fantastic and that's all glitzy and sort of red carpety and yeah. fun and stuff and then there's, there's going to be a little bit, bit of a break or well, I don't know when this has been going out or anyway but but um you know to when it actually hits hits this and it does hit a screen in a very different way from you know what what it did 10 15 years ago you know so it's, it goes onto these platforms that are just it's available globally it. and scary mm -hmm. scary numbers of people have the ability to try and you know to watch it if they if they want to if they're seduced by it so yeah very very exciting yeah, yeah. very yeah. exciting yeah. Oh, it's a good show as well I'm looking forward to seeing more oh, good, oh, good. Yeah. thank you I'm going to go and interview the other two you two have got to come and interrupt that interview now I've already done that I yeah. think no yeah. I, I did it to them before I think they'll get a bit irritated yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. doing a yeah, row and doing a row so thank you so much so Martin Comston, Emily Hampshire and Ian Glenn, thank you for your time and thank you for the rig. Um, let's just first off start by saying it's nothing like Line of Duty, it's nothing like Shit's Creek and it's nothing like Game of Thrones. Would that be fair to say, Martin? <laughs> Very true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. really, um... <laughs> No, it's, I don't think it's like anything really. Like I, I, I've seen it. It's nothing like anything. It's definitely the in terms of its ambition and its scale. It's the, it's the biggest job I've ever been on in that respect. And 
you know, we've got the wonderful John Strickland at the helm, you know, first dip block director, and you, they get this cast involved, and, you know, fair play to Amazon, you know, they've had a right good go at it, you know, um, because it, it, it's, it's trying something very different, you know, and it, it, even when you're reading it, you're kind of like, that. that's pretty bold, um, but it's really exciting to be a part of that. It is bold, it is different. Emily, where do you even begin to describe it in a sentence? I mean, uh, it's a thriller-ish, but it's not just that either, is it? Yeah. No, no, Martin, no! <laughs> no! So, well, now, yes. now I have to include him and in why everyone's laughing. Because I, at one point, did say... Listen up. Okay. That it's a supernatural thriller, but it's naturally super. Uh, I like that. Why is that a poster? That should be well, a poster. Thank you. But what I meant was I didn't mean to sound like Frosted Lucky Charms are magically delicious. <laughs> I meant to say that what I respond to in it is that it is a supernatural thriller, but the nature and the um, science in it is based on facts. Mm -hmm. It's just taken that up a notch to a souped up level. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it could happen, which is what I particularly love about this show, that it reminds me of what I like about Black Mirror, where it's that future that hasn't happened yet. Like this, I think, all the science is there. You don't maybe know the next episode, but like what happens in the show, which we can't tell you, which is insane, could happen. Basically, it's the end of the world. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> It's that wasn't the one sentence that I was after, but we, we got there in the oh, end. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, um, Ian, you and Martin, obviously the two Scots, did you have to teach the Canadian anything while you were filming at Edinburgh? Well, we took her for walks. You know, I, I managed to drag her up Arthur's seat. That was that was fantastic. Yeah, it's funny that you say drag her up now when I was invited on a wee walk. <laughs> a wee walk. A wee walk sounds wee. to me like a stroll, what we call a stroll, a nice yeah. calm thing. It ended up being I climbed a mountain <laughs> and a mountain called when I'm up there, it's like, oh, it's Arthur's seat. It's not a seat. It's not a seat at all. It's not relaxing. It's a hike. You need to sit down afterwards, Emily. That's what you need. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, that's about the only time we got Emily out. Uh, yeah. That to, yeah out. First and last. <laughs> first and last. <laughs> uh, no, we we were a very tight company. We honestly, we got on so well. There was a few of us who had, you know, worked together on different shows. We had quite a few of us have worked with John Strickland, wonderful director mm -hmm. before. Um, and it was, you know, I know actors say it, but I, I was a particularly fun, tight company. We all, we all loved it, and we all had great belief in it. You know, I think, mm -hmm. sort of, we were all very, very happy to be asked to be a part of it. So, mm -hmm. and Martin, uh, it, it was being made in Scotland. You've got a few uh, people that you know and have worked with before in another small kind of show uh, that are in this as well. There's a lot of talk about it. Uh, are you uh, a part of this talk? Part of this hope that there's going to be more Line of Duty as well, Martin? Look, mate, I, I genuinely, it's it's very heartening that people still want us to come back after all this time. Um, but unfortunately, there's no immediate plans. You know, um, I'd love to work with the guys again. You know, Adrian and Vicky are, are two of my best friends, and Jed's been such a, an essential part of my career. But, but, but we're not doing anything different either. We, we always take a big break in between series and give it time. Um, I mean, we won't come back just for the sake of it anyway. It, it'd need to be for the right reasons, and if Jed thought it was a part of the story still to tell, but no, unfortunately, there's nothing, nothing soon. But it must be crazy to be working on this show with so many faces from the, the other show. That, that, that yeah. mustn't happen often. No, but I, I, again, that's probably what came from, from, because it's such a big cast, from John working with people who he'd worked with before, who he trusts. And, but that was great as well, because I think while we were filming was the last series of when Line of Duty came out and, yeah. and the guys that went through this before, and in particular with Game of Thrones, it was, it was great to have his advice because it got a bit wild, you know, it was getting a bit out of hand just to hype around it, but having sort of Owen and Mark and, and Rashenda and Richard who'd all been in it before and kind of understood the world of it, it, it was great, but no, it was was quite surreal because there was at one point there was this, um, there was a the whole thing like who's going to be H and as that sort of mania was going on, there was Owen Teal the big <laughs> possible baddie standing on an H of a helipad 
And if, if anybody fucking saw this, man. Um, yeah, no, thank you, mate, but nothing soon. And Emily, how much of this is movie or TV magic and how much of it did you have to get C6 for and get wet? I mean, uh, I did, did I get, I, no, I did a lot of actual, is that the question? Like, did I actually do stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Hard <laughs> stuff. The hardest stuff though was the, was science, was okay. speaking science. That was the most, most athletic thing I had to do, <laughs> even though I did do, um, I mean, near the end, I'd never been in anything that was so, I felt like an action star. <laughs> um, it just occurred to me at some point, I'm sure both of you have been dragging me through a corridor. Well, yeah. And you know what? Yeah. You are not light. At all. Oh, yeah. You're oh, so. I thought you said you're not white. No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> that he, too. He's deceptively heavy. Really he's heavy. heavy. Yeah. yeah. But, and Ian, what about yourself? I mean, this is, as we've covered already, a hard show to talk about. You've done this once or twice before. Is it hard to do these interviews, to hang out at the pub after doing a big show like this? Well, you can't really even talk about it. And people are going to be pestering you once it comes out. What happens? What does this mean? All that sort of stuff. That must be annoying or exciting. I'm not sure. Was that for me? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it is funny. You do get it. Does become a bit discombobulating of what you can and can't speak about. You know, when people, people, you know. But it's a, it's a good problem to have because people only mm -hmm. obsess about it because they care. They invest so much in it, and, and they're desperate to find out how it's going to carry on and how it's going to continue. But it did get at a point after you know a few seasons of Thrones where. Oh, it was it was it was just crazy. It wasn't it wasn't even so much what you may or may not say, but people were flying drones over places that you were shooting in the middle of Spain and seeing characters together and putting stories that they sort of then invented. And I think part of the furor around how it finished was I always felt it was a little bit to do because people had kind of been given the time to write their own endings. Mm -hmm. So whatever it was, it wasn't the one that they had in their mind somehow. Mm -hmm. So it got it got a bit. But honestly, they're 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 good. They're good problems. They're good problems. I also think that's funny that it's just been our social media now. It's the negative things just seem to get amplified because I love Game of Thrones and I loved the ending. <laughs> I thought it was great. I really yeah. liked scorched earth. Like this woman's just been pushed to the limit and she finally went yeah. towards the plot. And I really enjoyed that. But well, now you've gone and spoiled it for some people who haven't watched it, Martin. You've gone and ruined it now. Well, yeah, I loved that part of it too. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. You come from such great pastures of television work and you're going into this fantastic show, which has got me on the edge of the seat. I think it's going to have the world on the edge of their seat. It's a load of fun and a little bit scary. Uh, nice to meet you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.